Hello and welcome to our daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline. I'm so glad that you're watching these devotions. Today we're going to take a look at the Gospel lesson appointed for this Sunday, the second Sunday in Advent. It comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 21. Jesus said, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity, because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heaven will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and at all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, we are still in the season of Advent. As you see, we still have blue on our stoles and on the altar. And the season of Advent is all about Jesus coming. Last week, we focused on Jesus coming into Jerusalem to die on the cross and rise from the grave. And we know also that we're getting ready for Jesus coming to be born of the Virgin Mary, wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid in a manger. But this week, we focus on a different time of Jesus coming, of his advent. The future advent of Jesus, who will come back on the last day of this world, bringing this world to its end, destroying it with fire, taking all the dead and raising them, and taking those who believe in his name into eternal life in his kingdom. This day is drawing near, burning like a furnace, our Old Testament lesson says. It could be any time, any moment. Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back soon. Do you doubt this? Jesus says, look at the signs that surround you. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. Sound familiar? The powers of the heaven are shaken, and all sorts of war, rumors of war, earthquakes, lightning, sufferings, pandemics, conflicts. That's the way of this sinful world. And when we look around, we see those things taking place. Jesus says it's like looking at a tree in the spring. You know the summer is soon to be there when the leaves begin to grow. You know the end is drawing near when you look around and see all the suffering and difficulty and challenge promised by God taking place. The end is near, to use the cliched saying. So how do you act when the end is near, dear Christian? Do you cower in fear? Do you stay in your home? Do you distance from God and his word? No, not at all. The text says, and Jesus says, lift up your heads, straighten up, because your redemption is drawing near. 
He says, don't be afraid of the end of the world, even with its wars and its suffering and its fear and its pandemic and its earthquake and its lightning. Don't be afraid. These are only the things of the world. Jesus has already conquered them, defeated them, destroyed them, and made a promise to you for your redemption. A promise that whatever happens in this world is not your end. A promise that you will be raised even if you die. A promise that you will live forever washed in the waters of holy baptism, fed with the body and blood of Jesus, having been called by God's holy word and absolution, you have been guaranteed life everlasting. You've been promised peace and joy and comfort forever. When Jesus comes back, that's what he'll give to you, even as he destroys those who did not believe and brings this sinful world to its end. You will live. You see, Christ died for your sin. And so all the things that sin has brought about, he has taken away from you. You need not fear the end of the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Think of St. John's Gospel when Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am you may be also. And if I go to prepare a place, I will come back to bring you to that place. That's what the end of the world is. Dear Christian, that advent of Jesus, every day, every moment, every second, draws closer. He's coming soon, very soon. Praise be to God. In the name of Jesus, amen.
we poor sinners implore you. To rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Oh,
not deal with us according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.